Hey guys, so I'm here to give you the answer for this riddle and before everything I'm sorry it took me longer than I wanted so I wanted to do every week right and this time it was two weeks and this is because it's exam season so many people were asking me for my help and once I realized help with physics and chemistry and all that stuff and once I realized I was like oh it has been two weeks and I haven't given you the answer so I apologize that uh, the answer came like a week later than I would wish for and um, this riddle that I'm going to give you as always has a new riddle in the end so I'm going to give you the answer then there is a new riddle in the end for you to think about and hopefully in one week I'll give you the answer but because it's still exam season maybe it will take two okay but keep checking the channel and you will see the answer so in this riddle uh, you had four squares and inside each square you would have a number and you would have to figure out which number would fit in each square to make that the calculations all the calculations or equations you had there both vertically and horizontally would be right so you had something plus something would have to give you eight that first number times something else would have to give you 21 the second number minus something it would have to give you five and that other number that I told you in the beginning, let's say the number three here or the number number three or the third number here that is unknown times something would have to give you nine. So you would have to figure out which numbers would have to be in each square. So I'm going to help you with this riddle. Uh, I have put in the description as well the first riddle like this that I gave you. So in case you haven't seen the other riddle yet, you can always check it and see with what we learned today or what you learned today in terms of how to answer this riddle, you can then try another one, which I think is easier to be honest. I think this one is harder than the other one. So I first gave you one and then I was like, let's stretch you. So hopefully you will enjoy this riddle and the other one. So the link is in the description, okay? So first thing, just like in the other video, I'm going to put some letters just to be make it easier for me to represent the equations. So I'm going to put A, B, C and D. So I have here the A, B, C and D. I'm going to put it here in equations. So it says that A plus B equals to 8. A times C equals to 21. B minus D equals to 5. And C times D equals to 9. Now, if you have seen the other riddle and how you should do this type of riddles, um, you know that you want to find something in common. So I have here each letter appearing twice. I believe is always twice. So you just pick a pair okay so you just pick a letter that appears twice and you try to make a connection between these two equations so I'm gonna pick the a plus b equal to 8 which is the first one and that obviously tells me that b equals to 8 minus a and I'm gonna pick the b minus d equals to 5 which is going to tell me that b equals to 5 plus d so I just pick the simple ones, okay, the uh, the sum and the subtraction, 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 I cannot sp speak today. So anyway, so what am I going to do now? So I have two equations for the same letter. So that means that 8 minus A and 5 plus D, they are equal because both are equal to B. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say 8 minus A equals to 5 plus D, okay? So 8 minus 5 equals to D plus A. And a plus d equals to 3. This is the maximum that I can get here, okay, at this point. So this equation is going to be really important later on. Or I can just simply say that d equals to 3 minus a, which again, I'm highlighting because it's going to be an important equation. So memorize this because this is going to come up in a couple of slides, okay? All right, so I kind of have a connection now between numbers. I know that D equals 3 minus A or then A and D together, they give me 3. Okay, so let's pick another equation. I have here that A times C equals to 21, right? So C is going to be 21 over A. And now I can pick as well another equation with C that tells me that C times D equals to 9. Okay, now I... Remember, I told you that th B equals to 3 minus A. So I'm going to substitute there in here because if I can do this, substitute it in here, I will figure out the number or the letter, no, actually the number for the letter A. So what am I going to do? C, which is 21 over A, times D, which happens to be 3 minus A equals to 9. So what did I do here? I picked the second equation in here. 
And I, instead of writing C, I wrote 21 over A. And instead of writing D, I wrote 3 minus A. And why did I do that? Because if I do that, I don't get two things that are unknown in this equation, but I get always the same unknown, which happens to be the letter A. And in this way, I can figure out the answer for A, okay? So, because I want to, where is it? I want to continue this calculation. This 21 over A multiplies the 3. This 21 over A multiplies the minus A. So, I get 22. 1 times 3 over a minus 21a over a equals to 9, which gives me 63 over a, which is this part, minus 21a and a cancel out, equal to 9. So I can carry on the equation and say that 63 over a equals to 9 plus 21. So 63 over A equal to 30. So therefore 63 over 30 equals to A. And although I have a number for A already, I want to put it in a simpler way. So I'm going to write it as 21 over 10, which is equal to Y. So what I did is I divided both sides by 3, okay? So A equals 21 over 10, or if you want to say 2.1, okay? All right, so I have A. So this now makes everything else easier. So let's carry on. So I have A. Let's figure out another number. I know already that A plus D equal to 3, right? I told you to remember this. So that means that D equals 3 minus A. And I have the number for A, which is 21 over 10. So D equals to 3 minus 21 over 10, just doing some maths now, D is going to be 30 minus 21 over 10, so I need to have the same number here below in the division to be able to do this calculation, so I multiply 3 by 10, and then I can figure out that D equals 9 over 10, or 0 0.9 if you wish, okay? So I have A, I have D, now it's even easier to get C and B, which are the ones that I don't have yet, okay? So I'm going to pick in this equation here, C times D equal to 9. I could have picked this one. I could have picked this one. It does not matter, okay? As long as you get the answers. It does not matter the order you do that. Once you figure out the relationship between, uh, in this case, two numbers in the beginning, and then you substitute that those relationships into another equation in, in order to get just one variable that is unknown to you, you will be able to do this. So you don't have to do exactly my steps you can try with other steps you will get the answer okay so in my case i decided to be c plus whoa c times d equals to nine so i already know what d is equal to so c is going to be nine over d and because d is nine over ten i say that c equals to nine divided by nine over ten and therefore c equals to 9 over 1 times 10 of times over 9 so i believe you know or you are familiar with this rule for me to do this division so that means that c is going to be equal to 10 okay so i had a to be 2.1 uh, d to be 0 0.9 c is 10 so i just need to figure out d uh, not d b so let's do it I can pick either the first equation or this equation in here, which is the one that I did. B minus D equal to 5. I did it because, no, actually, there is no particular reason. I was going to say that the number was easier, but I'm forgetting that C is the easy number, which is like a 10. So, actually, you could have picked any of them with no advantages really or advantages for doing that. So, B um, uh, equals to 5 plus D. Okay, and I know that D equals to 9 over 10, so B equals to 5 plus 9 over 10. Again, I'm going to apply the rules and I'm going to multiply 5 by 10. So 50 plus 9 over 10 is equal to B. That means that B is 59 over 10. Or instead of saying 59 over 10, I can say 5.9, okay? So that means that I have all the numbers. So here it was 21 over 10. Here is 59 over 10. C is equal to 10. And D is equal to 9 over 10, which is 0 0.9. So just to make sure, I'm going to confirm this just before giving you the answer. So let's confirm. So I'm picking here A plus B equal to 8. 
21 over 10 plus 59 over 10 equal to 8. Again, I could have made 2.1 plus 5.9 equal to 1, and you will get the same result. 80 over 10 or 8 equal to um, 8 equal to 8 straight away and 80 over 10 is 8 so 8 equal to 8 so this first is right okay let's try another one I'm gonna do this one now a times c equals to 21 so 21 over 10 times 10 equal to 21 so that means that 21 is equal to 21 so that's right again you could have written here 2.1 times 10 equal to 21 and you would get the same result Let's try another equation to see if it's right. So I'm now doing this one, b minus d equal to 5. So 59 over 10 minus 9 over 10 equal to 5. So that means that I get 50 over 10 equal to 5, which is right because 50 over 10 is 5. Again, I could have made 5.9 minus 0 0.9 equal to 5, and I would get the same result, okay? And let's see the last one, which is this one, c times d equal to 9. So 10 times 9 over 10 equals to 9, and of course, that means that 9 equals to 9. Again, you could have said 10 times 0 0.9 equal to 9, okay? So, as you can see, I showed you how you could get the answer for A, B, C, and D. We checked, so that means that the answer for the riddle is 21 over 10 plus 59 over 10 equal to 8. 21 over 10 times 10 equals to 21, 10 times 9 over 10 equals to 9, and 59 over 10 minus 9 over 10 gives me 5. So that is the answer. And of course, if you wanted, you could have written in decimal places where you would have 2.1 plus 5.9 equal to 8, 2.1 times 10 equals to 21, 10 times 0.9 equals to 9, and 5.9 minus 0.9 equal to 5. So I hope you really enjoyed this riddle and you did understand it. And again, you are, I mean, if you follow this channel, you know that I already gave you one like this one, right? So hopefully it was easier for you to go from that first riddle to this one and to answer. But if you somehow didn't do it, don't worry, because this was way harder than the previous one. And if you enjoyed this one, go back, check the other one. I'm going to put the link in the description and check the other one, because if you can do this one, you definitely can do the other one, which is easier okay and as always i gave you a riddle so i'm gonna give you a new one for you to think about share it with other people just like the previous one that i gave you see if other people can answer it as well so share it with other people think about it see if the other people have the same answer as you do and wait for the result as always it should be a week but if it's not it's because exam season is kicking in now i have lots of requests to help people so i may take two weeks okay i'll do my best so it says a horse is on a 24 meter chain and it's an apple that is 26 meters away how did the horse get to the apple think about it okay i'm not going to say much and as always up to my next video i hope you're happy and healthy and i hope you enjoyed this riddle bye